As a producer, you want to make an impactful track that will never be forgotten. Otherwise, your productions will be buried under hundreds of others that come out every day. Hence, it would be disappointing to just slip by unnoticed as an artist. One of the ways to avoid that is to add an exciting, uplifting lead sound in your track. That's what artists like B2 do and you will do after watching this tutorial. If you want to create exciting tracks even faster, join my free contest to win my Serum Rave Techno preset pack. With over 40 quality presets, MIDI melodies and percussion samples, you will be on a fast track to producing breathtaking techno. Download a demo pack now, make a track, post it and win a full product for free. The first sound or the first layer will be a classic Super Soul synthesizer with a small twist. As the name suggests, it needs a Soul Wave, so let's change the waveform in the first oscillator with the wavetable position fader. If we look at the melody I created, we will see lots of MIDI notes overlapping. In these places, I want to introduce a glide, a smooth, gradual and fast pitch change. Glide is an easy way to make lead sounds more interesting. To activate it, switch the voice into mono and adjust the glide duration with the fader below. You could hear the volume of our lead was changing in time almost randomly. It doesn't give a pleasant effect, so I will change that to make the lead volume always the same. This is done in the volume envelope window. After the attack phase, that lasts only a millisecond, we have a volume drop by 6 decibels in time of 600 milliseconds. To get rid of that, I simply turn up the sustain level to zero. It's getting better, but in my melody I have empty spaces that I want to maintain silent. Currently, the release is set to 600 milliseconds, which means the sound is hearable for this long once the MIDI note ends. Once I decrease that parameter, the sound will cut itself with the MIDI note. Now it's time to make use of a great synthesizer feature called Unison Auditium. In Shortcut, we told the synthesizer to play more than a single soul wave from a single oscillator and to slightly change the pitch of each extra soul wave played. This makes lead sounds incredibly smooth. I have explained this feature in depth in my latest Klankenstler video, so here I will only highlight the Unison parameters I will adjust now. Now, with a richer sound, it makes sense to fine-tune the waveform with warping section. On the bottom section of wavetable window, we can pick one of three warping modes that alter the waveform including the classic frequency modulation or BWM. Each of these gives two adjustable parameters to control the warping behavior. Let's make the saw wave slightly different. By using the semitone and detune controls, I increase the pitch of the saw wave. Now I will use the second oscillator to create a very similar sound that I combine with the sound from the first one. The goal is to create an even smoother lead. This extra smoothness will be mainly achieved by small pitch difference between two oscillators. Unison Detune feature relies on a similar technique. Let's set up the second oscillator.
I will make this second oscillator quieter. And the sound is ready now for the phaser. The phaser is an effect that copies the original input sound and delays it by just a few milliseconds. This causes a phase cancellation for various frequencies making them disappear. It's as if you take an equalizer and create a series of notches. On top of everything, this delay time is modulated. To visualize the effect of this modulation in the equalizer, we would have to move all the notches in time. What I have just said applies to the flanger effect as well, but unlike in typical flanger, in the phaser we have control over the number of notches and say relative position. All this gives us a characteristic lush sound. Having all the necessary knowledge, I can adjust the phaser. At first, I slightly decrease the number of notches, which will give me a bit more transparent sound. Fortunately, all the remaining parameters in this section can be left untouched. If I would like to, I could make minor adjustments to the notches, including shifting all of them to the right or left. Spreading them more across the frequency spectrum. And changing the way these notches move around. Let's alter the delay time modulation itself. With the rate control, I will make the modulation twice as fast. To make the effect more gentle, I will turn down the delay time modulation range with the amount knob. The feedback in extreme amounts can simulate the effect you can hear in the false density memes. We bring in the studio this morning one of the great rights activists. If you click the arrow to expand the phaser view, you will see the modulation shape is set to triangle wave. You can also see that we have in fact two triangle waves for that modulation or two LFOs for left and right speaker. Both triangle waves or both LFOs are out of phase which makes the phaser effect more transparent. I will make the effect more noticeable by turning down the phase shift to zero. <laughs> At last, to create a wobble in the beginning, I will use the duty cycle parameter to alter that triangle a bit. What's left is to blend this phaser with our dry sound using the dry wet knob. To make the lead more spacious, we can use the delay that will also enhance the rhythm. It will be easier to adjust this effect if I turn down the dry wet a bit. The current rhythm is weird. I will use the left section to change the delay time to standard 1 fourth of bar. I will apply this delay time for both left and right channel to keep things simple. I will also increase the number of echo repetitions with the feedback knob. 
The echo repetitions can also be equalized. I expand the filter section and use the high pass filter to make the repetitions lighter. The low pass filter will have slightly higher resonance, that will make the repetitions brighter. A cool effect is a ping-pong delay. It's a type of delay where each repetition is heavily panned towards either left or right channel. This will make the delay seem more spacious. If in any case you will feel the delay is too wide, decrease the stereo knob. At last, blend this effect with dry wet knob. That will finish our first lead layer. The second lead layer will cover a bit the Super Soul synth to make the resulting sound not so typical. The wavetable and the first oscillator will be changed to FM fold. That I found interesting to play with. The volume envelope has to be adjusted as well. Unlike in the Super Soul synth, I will keep the release around 600 milliseconds long. But I will increase the sustain again. To make the sound smoother, I use again the unison section to add and detune more voices. I want the sound to be even more interesting, so I will add some modulations. I will use the second envelope to modulate both wavetable position and the warping amount. You have already learned about these two earlier, so now it's only a matter of going to the matrix tab and assigning the second envelope to the right parameters. <laughs> Now I can adjust the second envelope. I will set it up to create a single wobble mainly by using the attack parameter. I will enrich the melody by playing chords and instead of changing the MIDI melody, I will use the chord MIDI effect. I want to have the same melody play in an octave, two and three octaves higher. The velocity of each chord note or part added is set with controls below. I will match the volume of this layer with our Super Soul synth by using the volume fader in the wavetable synth. Mm -hmm. 
it's time for the group processing now. I group both sounds and apply an audio effect track for parallel processing, where I will add reverb. I create two chains. The first one will have the dry sound, and in the second one, I will have a reverb with the dry wet set to 100%. Separating the reverb from the dry sound has at least a few benefits, including more convenient blending by using volume faders. Before adjusting the reverb, I will temporarily turn down the dry sound so we can hear all the changes easier. At first, to make the space created by reverb seem bigger, I will use pre-delay that shifts the reverb in time in relation to the dry sound. To make the reverb brighter, I will turn off the low pass filter that alters the sound right before going into the reverb section. The reverb could be more aggressive or metallic, so let me turn down the size control. I will also make the reverb longer by increasing the decay time. Another important thing would be to adjust the volume levels of both early and late reflections in huge shortcut. Early reflections are like the transient part in the kick drum sample and late reflections are like the kick drum's tail. Like the echo repetitions, the reverb can also be more narrow or wider with the stereo knob. And finally, I will match the volume levels of both reverb and dry synth. The last effect will be the drum bass. I will use that to make the lead dirtier because as of now the lead sounds too clean. The amount of both distortion and mid-high frequencies enhancement will be small. I let more high frequencies through by turning up the damp control. And alter the dynamics of the sound a bit with the transient control. At last, I blend the effect with the dry wet control and compensate the difference in volume with the output fader. This will allow us to compare the difference in sound with and without the drum bass. Again, for more quality sounds like that one, visit my preset pack website, join the free contest by downloading the demo pack and win the full product at the day of its premiere.